Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today's video we'll be looking at how to write if else statements like a pro. Now I will be showing these examples using PHP, but it really doesn't matter if you use any other language because the same logic could be used in most of the languages. So do stick around till the end to learn some really cool tips and tricks. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's take a look at the ternary operator. Now, what you see here is a typical if else statement. We have a value, we're checking the value and we are assigning a value to the statement. So let's print this and see what we get. we get adult. This is the expected output. Now, using ternary operator, we can have a shorthand representation of the if else statement. Now, let's show you, let me show you how this is done. I will take the variable statement and I will write it something like this. First, I'll put in the condition, which is age greater than or equal to 21. Then I will use the operator, which is the question mark. Now, the very first statement after the question mark will represent the truth or if this passes, then this statement would run. So I will keep this as adult and I'll use a colon and everything to the right of the colon will represent if the statement was false. So I'll put this as minor. Let me comment this and let me print the statement and let's see what we get. It still says adult. That means the ternary operator is working. I can show you that this, this operator works. Let me just make it lesser than or equal to 21. This should say minor. So that is it guys. This is the ternary operator. This is one of the most commonly used operators. When you get used to coding, if you're used to just writing if else statements, the conventional way, it's still fine. Now this is something that you might run into when you're looking at someone else's code. And if you're not used to it, it is very simple. The ternary operator is anything before the question mark is the actual condition that you're checking. And anything to the left of the colon represents if the condition passes and anything right of the colon represents what happens if the condition is false. Now, you can nest multiple ternary operators as well. Now, let me show you what this means. If I had to make an additional check here, this is a typical nested if condition that I'm trying to use here. And if I had to write something like this and say, if the dollar age equals 25, then I want to add something else along with the statement. Let's say I want to say that the, the person can also drive and can drive. Now in this example, we see that the age is indeed 25. So the output should be yes, adult and can drive. So let me print this statement and see what we get. Adult and can drive. Now, again, using the ternary operator, you can represent this in just one line. So let's take a look at that. I will use the same statement here. So as I said, first we're checking this condition, which is if age is, let me change this back to greater than 21. We're checking the condition if age is greater than 21, then we're setting it as adult, or this is basically the or, we're setting it as minor. Now we have the additional statement that needs to go only if the age is greater than 21. So all I need to do is I can concatenate and I can put another statement inside of this and I can say if age is equal to 25, again, I'm using the same ternary operator I will say and can drive and I'll use the or, I'll leave it as empty. Or I could just print it as not. Let me comment this here and we'll see what we get. Undefined variable age online 25. I shouldn't have commented this. So let's see what we get. 
adult and can drive. But if I were to say that the age is 24, he is an adult, but we are getting the other value, which is the not. So this is one of the cool uh, ways of writing the if else statement. It's called the ternary operator. And just to summarize, ternary operator is where you use the question mark and everything left of the question mark is the condition. And to the right, we have the colon and everything left of the colon represents if the condition is, uh, is true and to the right represents if the condition is false. Now let's look at an example of comparing a variable with a value. If you see here, we again have the age and we're checking if age equals 23, then we're gonna print the age, else we're gonna print wrong. Let's go ahead and see what we get in the front end. We get wrong, just as expected. Now, sometimes when you're using the if statement and you're comparing a variable with a value, just like this, where age equals 23, if you accidentally forget to use two equal signs, then you, what you're doing is you are actually assigning a value to the variable instead of checking the value. Now, if I print this, we'll actually not be printing wrong, but we will be printing 23. Now, this is a problem because PHP does not think that this is wrong code. It thinks that you're assigning a value to the, to, to the variable age. And since this statement works, it will return true and that's why we are getting inside and it's printing the value age. By making a very small mistake here, you're actually changing the entire code because the variable age was never meant to be changed. It was only meant to be checked for. So to avoid a mistake like this, always what you can do is you can put the value first and then check that against the age. Let's see what we get. We go back to wrong. And the reason why this will help is if you accidentally forget to add two equal to, you will get an error because PHP will not allow you to assign a variable to a value. So that's why instead of using the conventional way of saying age equal to 23, which is just fine, this is something that you can start practicing where you put the value first and then the variable. Now I have seen a lot of people don't actually use this, but this is something that is really handy if, if, you, if you don't actually do these checks and make sure that your code is absolutely fine. If you don't have, uh, if you don't test your code with expected values, then if you accidentally end up using just one equal to instead of two, your code will work just fine. You will not face any errors, but you will not get the expected output. So this is something that is that is really cool. And this is something that I would advise you to use is to use the value is to put the value first and then compare that to the variable. We'll see how we can write if else statements without the use of parentheses. And we'll also take a look at how to write single line statements. Here I have a very simple example. I'm checking a value of X and also I have an else if statement. Let's see what we get. We get it is 20. Now I can write this by removing it and representing it like this. And it should work just fine. Let me just clean up the code a little and let me change the value to 21 and see what we get. There you go, it says it is 21 and it works just fine. Now, this is just a cool way of writing the if else statements. This is not something that I recommend and that is because this will only allow you to run one single statement after the condition. If, let me show you how this is. If I were to write another statement here, uh, let me say something else we should be getting an error now. There you go, you get an error. It says syntax error, unexpected else. That is because when you're writing the conditional statements without the parenthesis, you have to make sure that you only write one single statement. This is not something that I personally would recommend, but this is something that is nice to know. Now, writing in single line statements is just the way you represent it. It's no different from uh, writing without uh, brackets. It's just uh, easier, it's just a nicer way of uh, presenting the data. 
if you add multiple else if statements, if you write it in a single line, it's, I guess, easier to read. Again, I don't recommend this because if you were adding additional statements here, it will throw an error. Let me show you again. If I were to change this to 23, you're expecting it to print, it is 23 and something, but then this will throw an error. Again, unexpected else. That's because it only allows one single statement per line. It is 23. So again, this is just something that you can use if you think you can represent the data, if you can represent the if-else statements a little better visually. But uh, personally, I would never recommend you writing if-else statements without the use of parentheses. Now, in this example, I have an array of students and I'm looping through each student. And what I'm doing is I'm checking if the age of the student is greater than 21. Then I'm setting the value adult is true, else adult is false. And I'm passing this entire student into the adults array and printing it later. So let's see what we get in the front end. So we see the two students, Roger and John in the array. And that's because Roger is 23 and John is 22. Now with this example, I want to show how we can avoid using the else statement. The reason we do this is if you see the data, you know that there are probably only going to be one or two students whose age is going to be greater than that of 21. When that is the case, most of the students are going to be minors or they're not going to be passing 21. So in such a case, instead of writing the else statement saying else, the adult is false, you can just go ahead and assign a default value to the variable and set it as false. This way, adult value will always be false. And only if they find, only if we find a student whose age is greater than 21, then we'll assign the value as true. Let's see what we get in the front end. It should be the same. And there you go. This is just a way in which I code that if I have a lot of data and I know what data I'm expecting, you can assign certain default values and you can shorten the code. You can make the code look a little cleaner. Again, learning from what we used earlier, we can just change all of this and we can use the ternary operator. Again, the ternary operator is first, we have to use the statement that is dollar age. If it's greater than equal to 21, then let's set it as true, else let's set it as false. Again, let's see what happens. Undefined variable age. Oh yeah, it's it's not dollar age, it's dollar student age. Let's see what we get. That's not how you spell student. There you go, we're getting the same output. Now let's take a look at null coalescing operator. Now what this operator does is it takes the variable x, it checks if it's is set or if it's null. If it's set and it's not equal to null, then whatever value is in the $x, it will assign it to $y. Otherwise, if it was null, then it will assign empty to $y. Now since $x has something set to it, let's see what we get in the front end. It says full. So now if this was, if $x was null, then this operator, which is the null coalescing operator, would see that $x is null, and then it would assign the value empty. Let's see if this works. There you go. Similarly, if the variable was not set at all, it would still work. It will just say empty. Well, that is it, guys. With this, we know how to use the ternary operator, the null coalescing operator, how to write if-else statements without parentheses and also in single line statements. I hope now we can write if-else statements a little better, but most importantly, the objective of the video is to show you how different people write if-else statements. I personally use conventional if-else statements and sometimes use ternary operators, but I do run into a lot of code written by others where they use the single line statements and sometimes without parentheses. And I hope now you'll be able to read others' code a little better. If you like the video, 
please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.